Hi, we're Pastors Corey and Melissa Inslee right here at the Exchange Worship Center. And we are so honored that you chose to tune in and watch us live. Man, get out your Bibles, your notebooks, follow along with the message, and we pray that it's a blessing to you this morning. We'll see you right after this message. Godfidence. Godfidence. We found out Godfidence over the past few weeks basically means that uh, we trust in the Lord, not in our own understanding, but in His. Amen? And that's what Godfidence is all about. You kind of heard Reuben talking about it a while ago. You know, Godfidence is walking in the confidence of God. It's about what He does, not about what you do. Amen? So we'd like to welcome everybody here. And let's take a moment also to welcome those watching live via Facebook right now. Come on, give me a hand clap. Let's welcome them. Welcome them. And uh, we just want y'all to know we got a chair for you. We got a chair for you. We got a back section. Come on, let's all pray for the back section. We're going to pray that that gets filled up. Randy and them were sitting over there. I had to get onto them and get them out of there. But, you know, uh, we just pray that God, you fill it. Fill it, Father God. Lord, fill this church for your glory, Father. And Lord, we thank you and we give you praise. So um, we also like to take a moment every Sunday to uh, kind of go over why we even have church, what the EWC is all about, why we exist. So we'll have it right above me here. I want everybody to say it with me because I want to get into your brain and get it into your heart of why the EWC exists. Let's say it all together. One, two, three. To connect people with Christ and strengthen them for everyday life. Let's say it again. To connect people with Christ and strengthen them for everyday life. How many need some strength for every day? Amen. Amen? We all do. But you know what's more important? Getting connected with Christ because that's the source of your strength. Amen? That's why we have it like that. That's why we don't say to strengthen everybody for everyday life and connect you with Christ. No, you got to connect with Christ first. That's your strength. Amen? So we are continuing this morning in the Godfidence series. So let's uh, remind ourselves of the theme scripture. We have a theme scripture that goes with every single series. Isaiah 41.10 is our theme scripture. It says this, all the scriptures will be right above me. Uh, so that frees you up to kind of take notes and stuff. If you want to flip through your Bible, you're more than welcome to. Mobile device, however you want to do it. But it says this in Isaiah 41.10. Don't be afraid. Come on, what a great way to start, start a scripture. Amen. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Here we go again. Come on, kind of going back to the whole uh, reason this church exists. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. That's, that's God talking there. He's, he's saying, man, don't be scared. Don't get frustrated. Don't get discouraged. Don't, don't get down. I'm with you. Amen. And not only am I with you, but then he takes ownership of his children. He says, I am your God. Come on, how many will take ownership of him and say he's my God? Amen. Amen? We want to say a lot of times I know of God. Or, or you know, I know, a, I know a historical view of God. Or I turn to God when I'm in trouble. But how many know him 24-7. How many know who God is in your life? Because you don't just turn to him in a problem, but he's there with you, never leaves you. He never forsakes you. You're with him and in his presence where it's a good time or a, a bad time. Come on. It doesn't matter how your life is going. It just matters that you have a relationship with God. Amen. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged for God is with you. So over the past couple of weeks, we have talked about people in the Bible who 
needed confidence. They needed confidence in order to defeat the obstacles that were in their way to the promise that God had for them. First one we talked about was David in a message called Sticks and Stones. Sticks and Stones. And you, you can go on our, our app, Facebook, you can go on uh, YouTube, website, all, the, all these messages are on there, all the series. Uh, David, Sticks and Stones. We talked about Joshua last Sunday. I highly suggest you go watch that message. It was a powerful message called Operation Lockdown. Operation Lockdown. To lock something down means that you have um, closed it and locked it because there is a threat towards something. The enemy has locked down your promise. You know, God has given you a promise. If you don't know what that promise is, you need to start seeking him because he has promises for everybody in this room. And if you're not looking for them, you're missing out. But can I tell you that the enemy doesn't want you to get your hand on your promise? Because if you get your hand on the promise, then you're the threat to the, the, enemy, the enemy's kingdom. If you get your, ha- your hand on what God has for you, he knows that, that he's going to have some trouble in his life. And so he's putting your promise on lockdown. But it's time to open that up. It's time to let the walls fall. We talked about Joshua and the walls of Jericho. Let me ask you this. What if the obstacle in your life wasn't an adversary or a 50-foot wall? What if the obstacle is you? Think about it. Maybe you got insecurities. Maybe you don't feel worthy. Maybe you feel like you don't have what it takes. Maybe people over time have told you this, this, and this, and this, and it has created a label with inside of you to where you feel you can't have what God says you can have. You can't go where God says you can go. You can't say what God says you can say. And we allow us to be the obstacle. Instead of an enemy, it's an enemy within us, ourselves. Think about this. Adam threw away paradise. Esau threw away his birthright. Moses threw away the promised land. And Samson threw away his own life. All because of personal issues that they gave into and could not get past. Pastor Stephen Furtick once said this. I love this quote. What would happen if you stopped asking, God, why am I going through this? And started asking, God, what are you preparing me for? Amen? Instead of sitting in the corner, rocking back and forth, crying and saying, God, I I can't believe you're allowing me to go through this. Why don't you do something? It's like Paul asking God, take away this thorn in my flesh. I asked him three times and he didn't do anything about it. I guess God doesn't love me. Maybe he's preparing you for something. Maybe he's strengthening you. Maybe he's, he's got you. Come on, y'all remember the Rocky movies? Come on, they had to train. They had to train in order to knock down their enemy. Maybe God is preparing you for something that you don't even see yet that is around the corner and you don't realize the strength it's going to take within you. But God does. God knows. And we get upset, and God, this is too hard for me. No, 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 no. I'm building something within you because you don't know what's around the corner. He's helping us. He's preparing us for something greater. Let's look at our main text this morning found in the Old Testament, in the book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles. It's mixed in with a genealogical, genealogical, I never can say that word, uh, record written by Ezra after the Babylonian exile of God's people. In fact, as you read this, you'll see that so-and-so begot so-and-so begot so-and-so begot so-and-so begot so-and-so begot so-and-so. It's really kind of boring if, if you think about it, you know, as you're reading along. And, and most of the people will skip this chapter. But the amazing thing about this chapter is right in the middle, right in the middle, the author Ezra stops and God focuses in on one particular person. 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. I'm going to read straight through it. There was a man named Jabez, who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. <laughs> Come on, all your kids will be named Jabez if that. Yeah, so <laughs> he was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. And this is what he prayed. Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And then the great climax of that scripture. And God granted his request. 
This morning I want to look at the life of Jabez in a message called, There's More Where That Came From. There's more where that came from. How many want to claim that here today? There's more where that came from. I mean, so many times we get in our minds about the pain and the anguish and the problems. Oh, there's more where that came from. If it ain't one thing, it's another. You ever said that? Oh, if it ain't one thing, you're just confessing over your life. Oh, I went through some trouble. I'm going to go through some trouble again. But how about the blessings of God, as Reuben was talking about? Come on, let's change our confession. Come on, that I know, oh, God has blessed me, and I know there's more where that came from. I know there's more where that came from. Now, at the same time, in just saying that, I want to give kind of a disclaimer to this message. This is not a name it and claim it, blab it, grab it type message. Okay? Now, what Reuben was talking about a while ago, he's right on because he's talking about when you're asking for things, it's lining up with the will of God. Amen? There is a teaching that has been going around for years that if you just say it, you can have it. But what if it's not in God's will for your life? See, it's not about just saying something. It's about falling in line with what God has for you. Amen? And so it's all about having a relationship with God and realizing His will and His plan for your life. I was just speaking at a youth rally uh, this past Friday, and... uh, Man, I had sinus, I had allergies going up, mocos was flying everywhere. You know, people thought it was anointing oil. No, it was just, yeah, just put it on, put it on. And so, but I was praying, I mean, I was, I was, I was speaking, and we, <laughs> we were talking about Jeremiah 29, 11. Come on, that, that I know the plans I have for you. That's God talking. I know the plans I have for you. And so if he knows then shouldn't he be the one we ask? That God, is this line up with your will? How do you know it lines up with his will? Because he'll bring it, and he'll bring it, and he'll bring it, and there's more where that came from, and he'll bring it, and he'll bring it, and he'll just keep loading it on as long as you're in line with his will. In fact, I wrote this down. The blessings of God are not based upon your wishes, but they are granted according to his will. God is not a genie in the lamp. Rub him the right way and he'll give you what you want. Can I tell you that you're crying and you're, you're, you're uh, you know, just dismay and all that? You cannot bring God down to your level. Yeah. We can't cry and get his sympathy. He knows what's best for us. He knows what we need and what we don't need. He knows when to give what you, you're, you've been asking for and he knows when to hold it back. Come on, I feel the spirit of Garth Brooks. Come on, sometimes the best prayers are unanswered prayers. <laughs> Amen? It's not based on your wishes. So don't get mad when God says no. Be glad because he's doing what's best for you. Well, I ain't got a man. Maybe you don't need that man. Come on. Maybe you haven't got it straight with this man yet. Oh, I'm, I'm, step, I'm stepping on singles toes. I'm step, Sorry, sorry. Sorry. This ain't a singles conference. Hmm. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name and will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, that's a powerful word, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. What people just want to hear is that last part, that God will hear from heaven, forgive my sin and heal my land. But nobody wants to talk about the first part. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. There's humility involved. They'll humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Come on, we think the word repent just means I didn't do it for a week. When repent means to put it behind you, put your back to it, and go forward with God. If they'll turn from their wicked ways, if they'll humble themselves, if they'll pray, if they'll seek my face, then I'll hear from heaven, and then I'll forgive their sin, and then I'll begin to do something in their lives. There is conditions. It's not just about God, will you do this and will you do that? God's saying, but will you do this and will you do that? We want God on our own terms. God wants to bless us. God wants to pour it out on us. God wants to open up the nozzle, uh, just take the top off and just let it pour. But we allow ourselves to get in the way and hold up the blessings of God. 
So you might be asking yourself, well, Jabez, you know, who's Jabez? You don't even hear about him in the Bible. It's just that little, little quote. Begat, begat, begat. Oh, Jabez, what's so special about him? What's so special about Jabez? Why did Jabez get his request granted? And I've been praying for 15 years, 10 years, 5 years, 20 years, and it hasn't happened in my life. What was so special about Jabez? Well, let me tell you what was so special about Jabez in case you missed it within the scripture that I read a while ago. Number one, Jabez was honorable with his lifestyle. He was honorable with his lifestyle. First Chronicles 4.9 says, we'll kind of uh, break down the scripture in Chronicles. It says, there was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. Now look at this next part. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. So we have two situations here that are trying to work against Jabez. First, he has peer pressure. First, he has society. He has people living a certain way that can uh, tempt him, that can uh, pull him and take him in another direction because how many know that you want to be loved and you want to be liked? Come on, that was a week because, you know, you know you're on Facebook and you're all sad because you got one like of your post and everybody else got 50. We want to be loved. We want to be liked because a heart is better than a thumbs up, Right? Right? Oh, man, that's all they gave me. They just liked it. They should have loved it. (laughs) Might as well put that. I wanted that. And so Jabez, man, he's being pulled in different directions uh, of of his, his family, of his friends. But the Bible says he was more honorable than his brothers. How close does that get? It's one thing about friends, it's one thing about your coworkers, but when it comes down to family, are you going to let them persuade you to go in the wrong direction? Are you going to persuade them to, let, uh, to make your life less honorable, to, to live how they live and do this and do that? No, 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 no. He said, it says that he lived more honorably than his brothers. In other words, everything that meant the world to him did not sway him from his lifestyle for God. He lived more honorable. And then it says his mother named him Jabez because of his birth. Now, we got to remember, names back then meant something. And they, people knew what these names meant. Oh, this is my son Jabez. <laughs> You're a pain. Yeah, they knew. You know, and people come, stupid names these days. Stupid names. And they don't mean anything. But back then, it meant something. In fact, people weren't named back then for maybe a month, weeks. It depended because they wanted to see how the child's personality was and see how the child was. If you notice, when Jesus was born, Jesus wasn't named Jesus right on the spot. It's when he went to the temple, they said they named him Jesus. Now, God had already established his name, and that's what it had been, but it was culture. That was the way they did it. And so Jabez had a label on him for life that basically meant he will live out in pain. He will have problems and he will have issues. But can I tell you that Jabez did not walk in the label. He did not walk in what other people saw him as. He didn't walk in what the the, the past had labeled him as. And he wasn't going to go into the future of what the past had labeled him as. He said, I'm going to do, I'm going to break the chains of all this. Those that surround me will not detour me. And my past will not define me. I will go forward. He was an honorable man. Are you honorable? Is your lifestyle honorable? Do you allow uh, the world to sway you and detour you and go off in other directions? We talked about last Sunday how you can't live for God on your terms. I live for God one day, and I'll do it God's way the next day. I'll do it my way, and then God's way. My way, God's way. No, God says, I need you to do it my way every day. If you want my blessings... If you want the life that I have for you, because I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. If you want that, I need you to continue in my ways. Be honorable in your lifestyle. I wrote this down. Before you ask for what you expect from him, first be obedient to what he expects of you. Amen? I didn't get a lot of amens there. Come on. Y'all still reading it? Y'all still? Let me read it again. Before you ask for what you expect from him, Oh, God, please, I want this, I want that, I want that. First, be obedient to what he expects of you. See, we want what we want, but we don't want to do what God tells us to do. I love those little memes that are on Facebook right now of the woman that's like, and then the cat is like, 
You know what I'm talking about? I don't know where in the world that came from, but uh, yeah, y'all can explain it to me later because I'm so stupid. But, you know, it's, I love the one that says, she says, I want to preach the gospel. And the cat's like, you don't even tithe. You know, I love that because it's so true because we first have to do what he expects. See, people think tithe is a, is a pastor thing. Well, pastor just wants money in the church. No, no, it's a Bible thing. It's a Bible thing. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you. It it says, put in the storehouse so God can have something to bless. If you don't have a storehouse, God's got nothing to bless. It's a God thing. But so many of us, we we, know, oh, I want to do the big things. I want to do the big things. But we haven't even gotten to the place of settling with the little things. Do what he expects. And then he'll do what you expect of him. And we, man, we have this attitude of, but life is hard. Oh, temptation's great, and sin is fun. You know, that's our mentality a lot, a lot of times. It's so hard, but Pastor, you don't understand. I live in this world just like you do. I go through the same issues. I go through the same problems. I go through the same temptations. I go through the same stuff that you do. But we have to realize that, man, there is a God that wants to take us further. There's a God that wants to take us higher. There's a God that wants to bless you. He wants to keep blessing you. But if we go in different directions, how can we expect God to do in our lives as we want him to? Hebrews 4.14 says this, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do. Yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly. Come on, we got anybody in here with some confidence? Come on, let us go boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. And I know you're looking at the scripture and say, well, it was Jesus. Of course he didn't sin. He, he, has, he had the same, uh, everything you know, that we did. He had the same desires, same he, he just did not give in to the flesh. You know, I told my son a while back, you know, he's 15, but I told this a, a while back, but you know, probably more, it's more applicable for him now because of the temptations that can come his way. You know, I said, son, you don't, you don't have to do things that your friends want to. You don't have to do things that the world tries to push on you. And, and I said, look, I, I'll give you an example because I'm going to be an example to you. I'm going to show you. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I, I can tell you that by this, I said, I've never had alcohol. I don't know what it tastes like. I don't know what a beer tastes like. I don't know what liquor tastes like. I don't know what drugs do to you. All I know is a Benadryl really knocks me out. But, you know, it's... <laughs> There's just things I've never done. I said, so let my life be a testimony to you that you can say no. It is possible. And you can live a great life. You can even even live live a greater life because you never touched that stuff. And so it is possible. That's what they're saying about Jesus. He didn't give in to sin. I'm not comparing myself to Jesus. I'm just saying there's some things that I've never gone through and never experienced. And so we can learn from this that that Jesus didn't give in to certain things. And so we can go in the direction that God has for us, even if you did do those things, even if you are living in sin, even if you do have things in your life that keep dragging you down, you can get up and you can brush it off and God can forgive you and you can go forward and the blessings can continue to fall on your life and there's more where that came from. Amen? Jabez was honorable, but also we got to understand that Jabez was faithful. He was faithful for, with what he already had. See, we look at Jabez a lot of times and we think, oh, poor Jabez. He hurt his mom, you know, when he was born. She went through a lot of suffering, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't his fault. But we think, as Jabez, we think of him as some basket case sitting in the corner with nothing uh, a poor beggar or something like that. But let's read this again, First Chronicles 4.10. He was the one who prayed to God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. In order to expand something, you have to have something to start with. And so Jabez was not some bum on the street. Jabez had some stuff that he was already blessed with. And so it says God bless and expand my territory. He was faithful. Let's get this in our brains. He was faithful with what he already had. 
What has God given you and have you been faithful with it? And are you expecting more and wondering why you haven't gotten it? Maybe he's waiting for you to be faithful for, with what you have. But I love the way that scripture starts. He was the one who prayed to God of Israel. He was the one who prayed. He was the one. What are you known for in the chronicles of heaven for doing? Jabez was known as the one who prayed to God. What have you done? What have you done that heaven screams it out? That heaven says, oh my gosh, look at that one. Oh, look what they're doing at this moment. Look how they're being faithful and look how they're being honorable. Fill in the blank. You are the one who did what? Is heaven rejoicing about it? Or is heaven praying over it? God, please do something in their life. God, please get that out of their life. Or are they celebrating? Oh, look. Has heaven's spotlight stopped in the middle of a genealogy and said, look at you. Whew. Is heaven that impressed that they would stop in the middle of a chapter over your life? That you would bless me and that you would expand my territory. Take what I already have that I've been faithful with and blow it up. Blow it up. What do you believe in God to blow up? What do you believe in God to extend? Take care of what you have. Take care of what He's already blessed you with. Then He knows that He can give you more. Yeah. See, we thought Spider-Man said that. With great power comes great... Res no, it was, it, was, it was there in the Scripture. It says, with little, you get more. With what you've been blessed with, if you take care of it, if you mold it, if you shape it, if you take care of it, if you... Um, you know, um, like, a, like a flower, you know, you're mixing up the dirt and you're giving it the fertilizer, feeding it, doing everything it needs, it will blossom. Yeah. And it'll turn into something greater. I love what uh, a quote from Mother Teresa said this, God has not called me to be successful. He has called me to be faithful. Yeah. I love that. Because you know what? With faithfulness comes success. Yeah. When you're faithful in something, God will do something in you. Luke 16, 10 says this. Is this making sense to anybody? Does this help anybody? Y'all just, y'all on Benadryl too? Y'all asleep? <laughs> Luke 16, 10. If, <laughs> if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. Come on, this is a Spider-Man quote. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. That's what Luke was saying. Be faithful in the little things. The little jobs pastor gives you. Come on. Come on, because it doesn't all start here. Amen? Yeah. It doesn't all start here. But I want, but I want, but can I, can, can you go take care of the kids? Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's little things that God wants to see if you're faithful in before he takes you. And it's not always about church. Let's take it into your own family. Let's take it into your own family. You know, uh, God, I really want that promotion. Have you given it all you got where you're at? I just want to be the big dog, and I just want to be the boss, and I just want to wear the white hat instead of the red hat and all that. But have you been faithful where you're at? Have you given it all you've got there so God can give you greater things? Last one, why is Jabez so special? Not only was he honorable and he was faithful, but Jabez was connected with God's plan. He was connected with God's plan. It says, please be with me in all that I do. You see that? In all that I do. Is it up there? In all that I do. He's involving God in all that he does. Now, God, you can be with me in my, my relationship with my kids, but I prefer you not to be in my relationship with my, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse, whatever. That, that's mine, but you can have this. God, you can have, you know, you can be a part of this, but don't touch my finances. You know, that's the worst thing you could ever say because I want God to touch my finances. I want God's hand to be on my marriage. I want God's hand to be on my kids. I want God's hand to be on my ministry. I want God's hands to be on this church. I want God's hands. I want God's hands. I want God's hand. Come on, how many want God's hands? Because when you want God's hands, then he's involved in everything that you do. And before you know it, there's more. Come on, there's more. There's more where that came from. 
Have your hand in everything that I do, Lord. Don't let anything I do be of my own uh, uh, power. Don't let anything I do be because I wanted to do it. But Lord, let it be because you want to do it. I've said this before. It takes more. It takes uh, the, the same amount of faith to believe that a door is open for a door to be closed. Hmm. God, open that door. God, open that door. What about God? If that's not the thing for me, shut that door. And then we get mad. God, why did you shut that door? Well, you asked me to. Because it wasn't for you. Because it wasn't the plan that I know that I have for you in everything that I do. And keep me from all trouble and pain. Keep me from all trouble and pain. Notice that Jabez didn't say, God, take all the crazy out of the world. Take all the the wicked out of the world because he knew that wasn't going to be possible. But keep me from trouble and pain. In other words, guide my footsteps. That I don't have to go, and if I do happen to go through something, give me the strength to get over it. Come on, let's get over it. Come on, look at your neighbor and say with with passionate eyes, get over it. Come on, maybe some of y'all need to hear it with a more demanding voice. Get over it. Come on, some of y'all been holding on to things for months, for years, and you're like, "Mm, I'm not letting go of it. You're like a dog on a bone, man. Get over it. You're holding your promise hostage because you won't get over it. Well, when they say I'm sorry, then I'll say I'm sorry. Grow up. I'm sorry. Uh, Some of y'all ain't coming back next Sunday. I'll grow up when he shuts up. I don't remember. Come on. Keep me from trouble and pain. Sometimes keep me from trouble and pain means that you say you're sorry first. I knew this wasn't going to be a popular message. I love what this person said. I don't know who said it. It's just a good saying. I have learned that faith means trusting in advance what will only make sense in reverse. I might not get it right now. I might not know why I'm saying yes to God in every single area, and I, don't, I might not know why I, 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 I listened to God and ditched that guy or ditch that girl or, 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 you know, I don't know why. I, I have no idea why I write a tie check every Sunday. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm not seeing anything right now. I don't know why I read the Bible. You know, sometimes it encourages me. Sometimes I just don't understand it because it's this one begat this one begat this one begat this one begat this one. But then when you look over it, you realize, oh, God was spotlighting somebody in the Bible and wants me to be just like them. Yeah. Honorable, faithful, committed. It's looking at it in reverse. I can look in reverse and I can say, oh, oh, that's why I stayed in ministry all these years. Oh, that's why I was faithful to uh, everything the pastor told me to be faithful to. Oh, that's why I was in jobs that I couldn't stand because it taught me how to be responsible and it taught me how to be. Now, that's why I worked for Rainbow Bread for 11 years and I hated that job, but it taught me how to deal with people and it taught me how to have responsibility and it taught me how to care for my family. It taught me something. Even though I didn't like it, I can look back and say, oh, that's why. Because he was bringing me into something greater and all I needed was the teachings and all I needed was the responsibility to show me what I needed to do because it would help me in the moment that I'm at now. What can you look back on and say, that's why? It might free a bunch of (laughs) y'all. It might free a bunch of y'all. and say, oh God, forgive me. Forgive me. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize what you allowed me to go through was actually going to teach me something. Really, his response is, there's more where that came from. See, because it's not only blessings that will come your way, but there will be things that you'll have to go through that will show you and teach you and strengthen you, and God does it because he, come on, can you take this? Are you mature enough to swallow this? Because he loves you. Hmm. Doesn't make sense now. But in retrospect, later on, you're going to see what that was for. That's what that was for. And I'm sure Jabez realized that because he was connected with God's plan. He was connected with God's plan. Let me close with this. 
It's the scripture we kind of referenced a while ago. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I say this scripture a lot because this is my life scripture. You, if you don't have a life scripture, you need to get a life scripture. This one's mine. You can't have it. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. It's free. You just got to pay me $19.95 a month. But uh, <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11 is my life scripture. What is a life scripture? It's what you will always point back to when you are discouraged, when you're feeling low, when you feel like you can't go on, when you need an encouragement. A life scripture is what you turn directly to, and it just brings you back to your senses. In my life, with different things that have happened throughout my life, I'm 46 right now, and it's like everything that's happened in 46 years, I can look back and I could quote this scripture, and it makes sense. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Even though you might have went through some things that made you feel like you were in a disaster, God says they are not going to be a disaster to you. They will not take you down. They will not take you out. They just made you stronger. To give you a future and a hope. I like another version that says this, to give you the future that you hope for. But I love that first part, and I've said this many times, but I'm going to say it in case you've never heard it. For I know, that word know, if you look it up in the, in the uh, scriptures, it will talk about how know means that God has already seen you walking in his plan. He's already seen you. He's already visualized you. I don't know what your plan that God has for you. I don't know if it's a, a certain career. I don't know if it's ministry. I don't know if it's uh, being a, a housewife and married with kids. Or, I don't know what it is. I don't know what God has for you, but whatever it is, God says, I've already seen you walking in it, and I've already seen you being a success in it, and I've already seen you being happy in it. Oh, if you would just listen to me, I'm over here. Would you come this way? Because what I have for you is the best thing that I have for you, and you've got to live in it. You've got to be in it. I'm over here. But we're going this way, that way, that way. And God's saying, but I have the plan. I have the plan. And I've seen you in a, as a success. In a, and I've seen you walking and you're happy. Oh, man, you're, you're, you're ear to ear. You're grinning. And oh, I've never seen you love life so much. And I've never seen you love your family so much. And I've never seen you love me so much. Why? Because you're walking in the plan that I have for you, says the Lord. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching. Man, we pray that this message was a blessing to you. We pray that it did something inside of you, encouraged you, and inspired you for greatness in the things of God. If you're ever in the Corpus Christi area, come check us out at the EWC. We're located at 6801 Weber Road. And if you feel like God is calling you to be a blessing to this ministry, go on our website, theexchangewc.org. There'll be some instructions on there to help you out. Otherwise, we love that you joined us. We'll see you next time right here at the EWC.